Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Welcome back to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide, and today it is Sunken Valley Part 2. And we have, last part, we've done the ape boss, and now this is essential. I mean, this part is essentially completely optional. But you don't have to do this if you already have killed the first snake. Basically. Because um, you can get one of the endings. Sure. But if but you want the platinum, you have to come here. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So what we're going to do is we are going to quickly repel over here, because this repels you in front of this enemy. Because if you were, if you were to... Get the items first, the enemy, then what that monkey walks forward and he spots you by the time you turn round. And then the, the, the white uh, the white monkey enemy is actually kind of difficult, so we're just going to completely avoid that and just kill him immediately. Fuck him. Yeah, I do hate this area quite a bit. Yeah, th this is not the worst area in the game, but it's up there. Uh, what's worse than this area? Uh, Fountainhead. Because it's... Like, yeah, Fountainhead yeah. is three parts. Yeah. It's like fucking hour long. Okay, so we get those items. Uh, essentially, the reason why it takes so long is because you need to wade through the, the sludge, and then by that time, the monkey's like... And it, it also seems like the monkey just it seems unimpeded by the sludge as much as you no, are. No, he's, he's totally fine. He's Mu got like... Must be nice. He's got monkey muscles. So he's just like powering through it. I'm just, I mean, I'm just saying they've got like a, it's like a three to one, or like a six to one yeah. muscle density to weight ratio compared to humans, man. They'll, they'll fuck you up. I'm just saying don't fight any primates. Curious George will rip your fucking arms off if you don't answer his questions. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is just showing you that you can get back up from the bottom of the, the valley, essentially. This is how you get like back up to the normal bit, but... Because warping exists, it, it's irrelevant. Yeah, like, why even put this in the game? Like, it's just giving... See if there was, like, warp tokens, like, you get one one warp after a boss or some shit, then... Cool. I mean, that's what they should do. They should make it that if you want a warp, it costs a humanity. That would, like, totally balance it out. Didn't they put a lot more fucking Jizo statues in this game, then? <laughs> <laughs> There's, like, what, five or six per playthrough? Well, I mean, that's not a humanity. I'm talking about like for Dark Souls. But Jizo statue would be the closest you would get to it because this Maybe. doesn't have a humanity system. It only has your revive tokens. Yes. Yeah, you spend a revive token. How do you get them back with a Jizo statue? Well, I guess you also get it back passively by defeating enemies. So uh, I think you only get one back that way. So now we're going to use the finger whistle. Uh, now it's like relevant to start talking about it. So if you use the finger whistle unlocked on, I it will send all the monkeys into like a rage and they'll start attacking each other. So you can just use this period to like sit back and wait till they've dealt with each other. Catch up on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Stick on Joe Rogan. I love how the monkey on the far, on like the far side who doesn't have the gun, he definitely didn't hear the whistle. But he's just firing on this monkey because he's like, is the gun insane? Take them down! <laughs> like some sort of monkey virus. <laughs> <laughs> so the white one will eventually run over and kill the one with the gun 
So then you need to wait for the white one to walk back. I mean, admittedly, like, you could just run in and kill them. Like, it's up to you. But I'm just showing you that you can do this. And then once the monkey gets to about this stage, you can then kind of go behind him and then backstab this guy. Because, honestly, man, these... He's still finger whistled. The white monkeys are such a pain in the ass, man. They do yeah, tons they of do. damage. And, like... They're, like, harder than those, uh, like, the, the general bosses. You know what I mean? What I don't understand is what part of the monkey's brain figured out dual wielding? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, know, man. Obviously, the monkeys went sod good. <laughs> Two, Two sods, sods gooder. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to pick up the rest of the items. Uh, from what I'm, Actually, from what I'm aware, you should probably... I mean, you'll be sucking up whatever the white monkeys drop. I'm pretty sure they drop something pretty decent. Each and every one of them bad didn't suck up. But obviously, you, you will be. So... Um, probably upgrade materials, like rare probably. ones or something. But the point is, is you saw there's items to suck Maybe up. Maybe some in. lapis lazuli. <laughs> uh, now nah, there's you can only get a certain amount yeah, of them. Yeah, I know. And it's yeah, quite yeah. annoying to to max out the lapis lazuli quest line. You essentially do need to beat the game like three times, which yep. is really annoying. I guess we'll probably do a part explaining how to do all that shit as quickly as possible. But at minimum, you do need to do the game three times. It's very it's kind of sucks. So this part I wholly don't understand. Just things come out of the walls. Uh, just do what we do. This is... When I do, when I do this part, I just ran through. Uh, there's very few items, so just effectively yeah. follow. Like, you can kind of follow like the white spots on the wall, which sort of takes you in, in, like on the ground, which is like the implied path. Uh, but there's kind of like a slightly more efficient way of doing it. So you pick up that, and then you come up here, and then you jump across here and get this item, and then you repel across to get the other items. So you kind of round about here and like, yeah, so you repel over there. And then three enemies jump out at you, but then you use your, not iframes, but like the game pausing ability when you <laughs> pick up an item and then you just like, fuck that. So then you fall down here, come up here and then that's it. Like that's this bit done. And it seems a lot more daunting like the first time you come in here, but it's 30 seconds. Why didn't nothing. you are one the snake? <laughs> I don't know what happens when you are one the snake. Me neither. So, I'm convinced this is a different snake. I'm sure this is snake three. No, I but, think this is snake one. But, I mean, whatever it is, the point is, is that you have to use the puppeteer ninjutsu on this thing. And then this, like, runs up and becomes bait for the snake. The snake will turn around. And, by the way, as soon as that snake fucking turns around, you need to move. Because if you wait even, like, a little bit, the snake eventually just spots you, so... Like, fucking zoom zoom, motherfucker. There's then, another way to do that. Which requires balls. <laughs> you make a beeline straight for the snake, right? Right. And you jump off the left into the void when the snake's about to attack, and you can you can then hook onto that grapple bit and go underneath its attack and run straight out of the house. Fuck that. So we got the dried serpent viscera, viscera there. I don't know what ending that's needed for. It's just needed for an ending. That's the one that kills the divine child. Right. Okay. One keeps him alive for eternity. And one kills him, I think. And it's Dried Serpent like that, yeah. kills him. I think Dried Serpent kills him, and Fresh Serpent is like sustenance for him. I think so, because you need to get. No, you give the Fresh Serpent Viscera to the, the Girl Divine Child, but. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, sure, sure. The one who's in like the place with all the monkeys. The, yeah. Uh, the Folding Monkeys. So the reason why this place now looks destroyed is because apparently the. Um... The monkey came through and killed all the people that you killed again? Yeah. So. As you can see, this cunt is shown up, which is why in the last part, we already came here, we've already went past it. So if you really don't want to beat this boss, and it is recommended that you do, because you get two prayer beads, um, you, you can just go past this part. Why doesn't he kill snake eyes for you when he's on the way down here then, prick? I, I don't know. Maybe he does. He doesn't. Wow. Ungrateful. Anyway, though, so this boss is very much like fighting the second half of... I mean, it is just fighting the second half again. So you just deflect his attacks, and then you use the spear, and then you pull him out. Now the problem being- You missed the spear there. Yeah. So, I, and this is exactly like one for one. The first half of this boss is the second half of the last boss. So and there's not the second half of this boss was the first half of me giving up on this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the second half will spawn another fucking ape. Um, and it's a total pain in the ass. but there, there's like a- Basically, again, it's one of these bosses where you just ace the first half and then it allows you to be sloppy on the annoying fucking second half. So as you can see, you're just waiting for this big slam down attack. You deflect it. 
and then you use R2 on the spear, you pull out the 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 centipede that's possessing it, and then you can get the vessel on it. So now he'll like run away and then the other fucking monkey will come down. Now you want to deal with this monkey somewhat like you dealt with the monkey in the last one. So you want to oil it, set the fucker on fire. Now, what I will say is you really, really do want to deal with this monkey. Because it's so much harder to attempt to fight this thing legit whilst this thing is taking swipes at you. So set on fire once you get an opening and it's you do have to try and split them apart. Now, when the headless monkey will do the terror roar, um, what happens is at that point, once it's done the terror roar, the second one will come and attack you and you'll get a little bit of an opening. So that's kind of the point to do that, but it's also you need to just wait for the fucking headless one to actually do the terror roar to begin with. And in that case, he done it as that one was on fire, so I wasn't actually able to get in and get any hits in. But as you can see, because the first half was done so well and it's so easy, you can be sloppy with the second half. Because once this is done, it's just, you know, it's just business as usual and it's easy enough. What as happens you if you set, what happens if you set, um, Headless Boy on fire? Does he have the enraged thing or does he just ignore it? I think he ignores it. Now, another point to make as well is when the second monkey gets weak, it then goes behind and stays more passive, but then when you get close to the headless one, it'll start taking fucking swipes at you. So, it's actually such a fucking pain in the ass. But as you can see there, he did do the terror roar, and then the second one did come out to attack me. In this absolute camera jungle right now. Yeah, like I said, it, it's hard to get unsloppy footage, but this is how you do it. But I, now, it, it's fine. Easy peasy. It's just back to what you were doing. You just need to make sure that you don't use uh, any emblems or few emblems anyway, taking care of the second monkey because you need the emblems to be able to do this. You, I mean, you can beat this boss just by deflecting it over and over again, sure, but you know, it's gonna take a hell of a lot longer. Again, there's a the terror roar and you know, when the other monkey's there, that's what you're looking out for and then it will come and attack you. I just hope that we've explained this well enough. There's honestly. no way to really explain this boss fight. It's just a complete fucking mess. Yeah, the, the simple fact is, is that no matter how good you are at the game, you it is very easy to fuck up the second half of this One fight. One mistake is all it needs, and then you're just swarmed by two of the giant monkeys and you're dead. The, the camera is like the biggest issue, realistically speaking. I know somehow the camera is the biggest issue in a in a boss arena that is just wholly open space. Yeah, yeah, it's fucked but up. They, they just push you into walls because of how much range each of them has, and then when there's two of them, you have to avoid both of them, and then they're changing position. And So when you yeah. kill it, though, you do get two prayer beads, and then you want to come up here, and then you use the... Mortal Blade. And then that's you You finally actually kill the centipede. You could have just done that the first time you fought it. Could have. But the game said, no, his body vanished. The monkey's a Jedi. So you then get the... Um, the, the blood... The, you, so you get an ninjutsu ability and it essentially like powers up your normal hits but I've literally never used it it's never came up it's not particular. I think it powers up mortal draw as well I don't know I think it does point is though is now we are just uh, using our prayer beads enhancing our attack if we have to which we should have done after the last boss I'm sure we did you know just make sure you get your on top of all this stuff so we've got one um, ability point but I don't think we spend it Nah. You've almost got to. You probably won't. And now it is just moving on to the... The Amiibo? Yeah. And it's just like the next the next area. But now I do remember that the, the little uh, ninjutsu guys do appear at this point. Uh, so I think it's because you have Mortal Draw. Is it uh, the Divine Child that triggers this? No, we already had it. Like, we came here with Mortal Draw in the last part and they weren't here, so I, I really don't know. It must, it must be the Guardian Ape, then. Yeah. It must be the Mortal Draw and the Guardian Ape that triggers it or something like that. Because be. I can't think of any other potential, like, trigger that you passed in the last few parts. So, I hope so. this part was helpful. Um, when I learned this technique, it made this boss significantly fucking easier. So, like, just to reiterate, if you're still here, uh, first, 
first half of the boss fight, you're deflecting its attacks, using the spear to pull out the centipede, getting a few hits, and then you just repeat that until it dies, or you take off uh, one of its health bars. Then the second monkey will come down, you want to attempt to separate them, but you can still be sloppy, just kill that second monkey as fast as possible. When it uses the terror roar ability, the second monkey will come out to attack you. That is your main opening. Make sure it's oiled, set it in fire, and try and kill it as quickly as you can. Once that's out the way, it's business as usual. Deflect, deflect, deflect. Use the spear until it's dead. And that is the, the game plan that we're going for for the second monkey. But that is the end of this part. And the next part is Mibu Village. And actually, the next two parts are a lot less hassle than I specifically remember them being. So, uh... And I've got a very good, not like technique, but there's like a a pattern that you go through the area and it just saves so much time and effort. I think you're just smooth sailing for now until the fucking dragon area. Uh, the dragon train. It's yeah, pretty smooth yeah, sailing. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So we're yeah. going to leave that there and we'll see you in the next one. Catch you guys later.